All right, we're already starting to debate in the breaks here, so um, the politeness is starting to wear off. Um, <laughs> now, some of the names of the speakers at the convention, they might surprise you. Now, listen, the big names, obviously, tonight, and the, the Christie's and the Ann Romney's, um, they are to be expected. But even Glenn Beck's website, The Blaze, says that the Tea Party has infiltrated the convention even more than expected. A look at some of the speakers, it speaks to this. Donald, that's right, the Donald, Mr. Trump, known for his unrepentant fixation on the birtherism, supposed to speak, only pushed out by the storm. Self-proclaimed toughest sheriff in America, Joe Arapaio, a man known for uh, a very anti-immigrant stance. He's scheduled to address a large audience of delegates at a special reception. Nikki Haley, former Tea Party Garland, governor of South Carolina, got a primetime speaking slot. Ted Cruz. Texas Tea Party candidate for Senate will also get a chance to speak. He wants to get rid of the IRS as well as the Department of Commerce, Education, and Energy. Senator Rand Paul here, the man who thinks that private business should be able to exempt uh, the Civil Rights Act. He got a speaking role at this. And uh, congressional con candidate Mia Love from Utah got a chance at the podium. This new Tea Party favorite said that one of the reasons she decided to move to Utah was because she liked that you could openly carry a weapon. Okay. Point is, Tom, we were talking about in the break that, hey, listen, um, this is a lot of just uh, posturing and whatever else. But it's also about perception. Now, you look at the demos right now. The one demo Mitt Romney's doing real good is with white voters. Mm -hmm. Female voters and every other ethnicity usually goes Democrat, but they're going even in bigger numbers right now. Does this platform narrow the window that you guys can win in when this should have been all about elections instead of social issues? Listen, I, I certainly would like to see on some certain issues that I'd like to see my party take a, a, a broader, more attractive stance. There's no question about that. But I think I always go back to this, is that I think that if you sit around your dining room table with your own family, you're going to have real stark differences. I think that, you know, when you say something like, you know, the, the sheriff in Arizona is anti-immigration, he's anti-illegal immigrants crossing our border and causing havoc in Arizona. He's not against immigration. So, I mean, I think that, you know, we mince words. I've been watching Newsroom lately, and they take a soundbite and they expand that soundbite. Tom, you and I live in a world that's about perceptions, and here's my point. Mitt Romney believes in exceptions for abortion, right. rape, incest, health of mother. Right. The platform of his party, for which he is the nominee, right. believes there should be no exceptions. Right. That's not you know, a distinction without a difference. It is. It's, it's they, a, they are different. And I'm telling you, people didn't view the Republican Party this way when it was George W. Bush and it was Ronald Reagan. Here's the difference. The difference is, is that in the Republican platform will say this, but the nominee of our party, the man who will be president, says something totally different. His policy will be carried out. Unlike the Democratic platform that we just discussed says, we are in favor of partial birth abortion. And on a number of occasions, the president of the United States, when he was in the Senate, voted for those things. Real quickly, you know, Dom, I looked, it was an interesting story. Um, George Romney. Mitt's dad. In 64, uh, he went to the convention here, and he walked out of ba Barry Goldwater's speech here because he disagreed with what he was saying specifically about civil rights here, and he said their sharp turn rightward. Nelson Rockefeller, uh, a Republican who wouldn't even recognize the party now, he spoke out and was booed on the floor here because he says, this is not the party I grew up with. You don't hear that anymore. You don't hear, Dom, the... Javitses, even the Chris Shays we have here all the time, feeling welcome. How did Chris Shays do in his last election? He got kicked, he, he, and he, he got lost. kicked hard. How, how did Javits do in his last election against D'Amato? He lost. How did Nelson Rockefeller do when he ran for president? He never became so president. Mean that unless you sing no, the litmus no, song, no. That you're not going to get on the stage. It means that if you're if you're a member of a party, sometimes you get the things you want, sometimes you don't get the things you want. It doesn't mean you take your ball and go home. You continue to fight for the things that you you believe in. I just don't think, and you make this your career, that that's the best way to get your party elected. It might work in certain regions of the country, but you narrow your window of possible voters here that are going to vote for you. I know a lot of people who voted for Obama four years ago who would consider voting for something else, but they hear some stuff and say, I just can't go that far. 
And since, they'd vote against Obama Since 1980, time. we've had Reagan twice, we've had Bush once, we've had Bush twice, and you've had Clinton for eight years and now I Obama. Me. I, I'm just I, telling no, you. No, what I'm saying you know, is, is that I think that the American people are evenly divided, and we will constantly have these swings back and forth. All right. We're going to jump to a break. Dominic, I'm telling you, keep it down over there. Uh, we're going to break down um, a key demo here, and that is the importance of the women vote and if Romney can help get him. Now, stay with us, everybody. When we come back, we'll head back to Tampa. Andrew's got a good guest for us right after this.